Herzlich willkommen heißen meine geliebte Bruder und Schwestern. A warm welcome, my dear brothers and sisters. I had my friend Paige come over and basically um, she walked in and had a dress on and I made a comment and it was pertinent to a similar situation a week prior that I think we do explain in the video, but right for when she walked in the door, that first comment is what got this conversation started and we hit record almost immediately. So join me in thanking Paige for being open from Lululemon to Pilgrim. I feel like my intention changes wearing this dress versus the one I wore at the wedding. And I like the intentionality and the mindset behind what that brings to me more so than what I had before. Because I feel like it's like quite legitimately old versus new. And I like the dynamics of the person that I am and the mindset that I have when I wear a dress like this versus the one I wore. Describe the differences in the mindset and how that is connected to the features of the dress. So, I mean, as far as like, I have this negative connotation with looking like matronly or like super Mormon or like super religious or cloistered or I like, I like the words, the adjectives you're using. Are it's fun, uh, fun for me. It's I'm not in any way mocking or, or laughing at you. So to me, it's, <laughs> I just, like, when I put on stuff like this, I'm like, oh, gross, like, weird. This one is classy and actually looks nice, but maybe I just haven't had the right style of dress previously to feel stylish and ethereal and Let's get a full body. Can, can we get the full? Yeah, it's, I feel like a pilgrim. Like, that's almost, yeah. So it's just like you just stepped out of your little house on the prairie. That that's a little bit how it feels. But without the bonnet, you're not worried about. <laughs> I want this sunburn. one on my face. Oh, okay. I don't have a bald spot. It's fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm learning that when you're being vulnerable, that's attack right for Justin. But that's good because I'm. It's a good timing actually because I'm opening up with you. I'm opening up to see what you're sharing, so it's a good time to <laughs> jab one in there. Um, I I have to at least try sometimes, but okay. So that's so, the mindset behind yeah, this dress, correct? And I'm guessing the features connected to that are the looseness in the sleeve or the shoulder that it's coming all the way out mm -hmm. to the wrist. Yeah. Um, the length. Mm -hmm. What else? Um. Just the fact that it's so, it's 95% of my body is covered, which not necessarily is a bad thing, but I think it's because I spent so much of my life associating modesty with insecurity and not empowerment. Go on. So, I mean, the message that I've been receive, receiving or thought I was receiving for most of my upbringing from the world or whatever. from the world and from the, the gospel, the church is like, Oh, well, if you're not in this category, then you're kind of a hoe or you should be covering up because no one could see that or men can't handle their own thoughts or themselves. It's like the agency of modesty was taught to shirk accountability, at least from my experience or from what I've learned about it. But it was always a repression, almost. I'm not, sure I, I'm not sure I quite caught the sentence. Yeah, you flesh it out for me so I understand. The agency of modesty, is something of accountability. So having the agency of modesty felt like it was not given as agency. Ah, like to have options to wear the pilgrim or the Lululemon. Correct. So at least the message that was received was this isn't your choice so that you can manage the feelings of someone else. It's a very people pleasing tendency. And for me, I, like for being shoved into that people pleasing category, 
I'm allergic. I don't want to be in that same category that I was forced to be in as a child, an adolescent, and as an adult. Is I think is it possible that all humans are allergic to having their agency shrunk? Yes. Whenever they feel like they don't have a choice, they're gonna like prove yes. they do. Yeah. And I never had a problem with it as a teen because I always was. I was actually extremely conservative, and I would wear multiple undershirts and like multiple layers. Just, I never wore shorts or capris ever. I always wore pants. Like I just didn't. I felt insecure about my body. And as I got more confident, as I gained and worked on my confidence getting to an adult, it was a form of self-love for me to be like, I just don't care. Like, I love my body the way it is, and I am going to wear shorts, and no one is going to care if I have cellulite or if I look like oatmeal. Like, it's no one's business what I think about myself. But I realized that the dichotomy of... The mindset that I had behind it, I don't want to be her anymore. I don't want to be that person that's like, I'm going to be confident and you're going to be okay with me being confident, despite what you think. Because the reality is I expect people to self-manage themselves. But you want confidence. But I want confidence. I can have confidence. And it seems like... And still be modest. It seems like the insecurity of I'm, I'm not wearing shorts or capris because I'm ashamed about the size of my thighs mm -hmm. versus I'm no longer ashamed and I'm oh, like, it seems like you would want to keep that shamelessness that you would want to keep the confidence. In yes. Because it felt like freedom. your body type as it is. It felt like freedom. It felt like my own choice and it felt like, yeah, I can show up for the times and situations that modesty calls for like at work or whatever church that it's still a part of me. It's not like it's not, it's just the, the goals that I'm setting in my life and where I want my spirit to be align better for the growth moving forward in this dress than it did last week. Does that make sense? I am interested in hearing all that you have to say and share. I definitely, it's... There's definitely more to it because why? And it, are you still keeping the confidence and you're not ashamed of your body, but then this is a new level on top of that? Or is this a revert, a regression back to you're covering up more because you're ashamed or I guess Ooh, that's a good question. I'm not ashamed and I can still have that confidence, but I think it's that I'm taking the two and making them go in the middle. It's like I'm taking the things I revere and respect about modesty and the things I revere and respect about my confidence and being free and I can merge them in the middle. Because I feel confident in this dress. I feel happy. I feel beautiful. And I don't worry once throughout the day what my body looks like. I'm not like pulling down to making sure it's covering my knees. I'm not making sure the sleeves are covered. I'm not like checking myself in the mirror to make sure my body looks the way I want it to, which is nice to feel that way sometimes. Like, to where I'm like, well. Yeah, you know. when you want to, like, peak your beauty. Yeah, when I want to feel really, like, sexy yeah. versus beautiful or matronly, whatever. Because I realize there's there's power to it, and I'm, and I'm not trying to gain anything from it. I'm not trying to be like, okay, well, I accept myself, so you're going to accept me too. You know, what comes to my mind is this, uh, something I heard from Marshall Rosenberg. He said, don't give people the power to make you submit or rebel. And what I heard from you as a young woman and growing up in the church, you were told to submit to the standards of modesty. Mm -hmm. And you said, no, you can't make me submit. So you rebelled. And I was happy with it. It was a very gradual thing. Happy with what? I was happy being modest when I was a teenager. Oh. I never had a problem with it. Okay. Like, I was, like, my mom was shocked once when I wore, like, a spaghetti strap in public. She's like, are you okay? What age was that? I think I was, like, 17 or 18. Okay. Okay, go on. And she was, because she knew that I always just, always was covering up and, you know, even wore jeans and long sleeve, like, in summer. So the rebellion hadn't. No, before 17. no, 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 not at all. This was a very gradual thing as I continued to like have highs and lows of 
like self harm emotionally and spiritually. And as I continue to have worldly confidence, right? I would say worldly confidence. Um, yeah, it's a different kind of confidence. Correct. And More like short accept, you know, accept where my journey was or accept where I was going. Um, and specifically sought to build said confidence and love myself more. Like I can love myself a hundred percent when I'm out in the sun around no one, just wearing a sports bra and shorts. No one's around and I want the sunshine. Right. So to me, I'm like, no one's going to take that choice away. That is mine. Like I have the freedom to move. Do you feel like someone's taking your choice away? No. That's what I'm saying. So this is where my mindset was for all of these years. And then as I'm changing and growing towards the things like the Hold on, let's more about the mindset where it was for all these years. So modest till 17, but at some point you rebelled against the modesty standards. Yeah, but I mean, that's probably only been the last couple of years. Because like, just for so long, it was just a, a part of who I was and it was a part of my, well, that's just what you do. And like, you just, have, and people like me that are my size, like they shouldn't be showing that much. Well, like till what age then? What age did you start wearing more of like the tight stuff in public and the showing of the midriff and the... Yeah, that's only been the last couple of years. Like two, three, five? Yeah, like two or three years, probably. Oh, okay. So... So exercising, you didn't wear your exercise clothes in public? I mean, I, I did. Like, that's pretty normal to wear, like, leggings and, like... It's like definitely a short normal. Like, short sleeve shirt. So that, to me, like... I didn't you consider did, over. You wouldn't have done that before seventeen, though. No, that's what I'm like. Asking. I wore like t-shirts. And, yeah, like what age did you? Yeah, wear? like I felt incredibly awkward like playing volleyball and having to wear spandex like in front of everyone. Oh, you played volleyball in high school? Oh yeah, I did. Oh yeah, no all these. So all these. Um, girls, I was gonna say softball was fine because that like you're like covered. Yeah. But yeah. volleyball, like especially in high school and especially feeling insecure and weird, which is so funny because I was smaller than I am now. You know, like I wasn't, I just thought I was so big then and just so like, ah, you know. <sighs> but the mentality, what like yeah. made it way bigger. Yeah, than exactly. Deal. And it's exactly. so crazy how our mindset can work against our goals. Yeah. I was just talking to my business coach about that this morning about how like, the thoughts of like, Justin, you got to get up. you got to get stuff done. you got to be more successful more quickly. <laughs> Makes it, like my response. you got to be more successful more quickly. My response. To Every that, human being ever lived. <laughs> yeah. The end. <laughs> but, but it's so analogous to the female. Got to be thinner like now. Oh, today. 100%. Yeah. Because the currency for males is financial. The currency for females. It's literally is visual. the same pattern of thought in a male and female female and male body like we're like the inverse reciprocal thoughts yeah that's exactly we're literally talking about the exact same thing yeah well and like that's the kind of currency that most people are looking for in a dating situation right or to consider them a viable partner but but the irony is that when these thoughts pass through my mind and i believe them the result that i observe is less of a desire to act to make videos to be productive to look for financial gain you know in the margins i'm just like i'm tired from these thoughts i need to i need to recover from these thoughts so let me do nothing let me do something leisurely indulge in entertainment you know what i mean i imagine it's similar for the for the woman as the thoughts of like got to be thinner faster now that one like seeks to comfort oneself after being barraged and battered by those thoughts like correct those, yeah. which works against the end because goal ego is a shameful parent and it works against my end goal of earning the income, and it works against your end goal of losing the weight. It's not losing the weight anymore for me. Okay. Or against the Being end. healthy. Okay. It works against the end goal of being healthy. I mean, but that previous... I love the distinction. Yeah, I was uh, going to say... I absolutely previous, eat it up. Well, because, okay, because that's going to be... That's gonna, <laughs> because that's going to be a natural consequence. Exactly. Like, I, that's not the end goal because that's I'm not taking the right steps to get there. Exactly. I'm not accepting myself. The, the, the times that I've been most successful losing weight and doing that has been the times that I fiercely accept and love myself first. And then it happens. I want to be thinner because I will be healthier. Because I will be able to chase after my children longer. Because I won't hurt at the end of the day. Because when okay. I'm old, 
I don't want to have to look like these people that just are miserable and obese yeah. and have they enjoyed no their happiness. freedom for decades and now and just the consequences are changing. I want to, the to I want to be able to memorize and, and learn things when I'm old. But how does your experience um, as you love yourself and you get better results with weight? How does that apply to your more modest dress here? Because it's part of the new you, you said. Yeah, and I feel like the it matches you the mindset that I want. And that mindset is connected to what you're wanting for your physical health. Right? I mean, but I, it's not even like a weight thing at all. Right. It's, it's a not a, it's, it's a health thing. No. It's, it's all about spirituality. It's my mindset. It's not, oh, okay, well, I'm wearing this modest dress because I want to hide what's going on with my body. It's, it's not that. It's that... I see. No, and I didn't intend it that way. Go on. No, but I, no, I, I like the distinction. <clears throat> um, so for me, it's, it, it's that I feel like my spirit and my body are one. They are. Whereas sometimes when I'm trying to create that distinction or create that silhouette of pay attention to me, look with, at how pretty I am. With the tight clothes. Yes. Because it, like I said, that's like, that's like a false sense of empowerment. I Did guess. You say that? I don't so, remember you saying that. Like I said, this is. I say like I said a lot, which is not. But how I felt was, and it's it's not that it's not ever gonna not happen, right? But to me, I just like I just want to like purge all my clothes and just buy things that are comfy and have puffy sleeves <laughs> and like. Just that I can feel comfortable in and beautiful in, but that don't create a false intention of where my journey is going. This all happened in the last week? No. I mean, I've been working on it up to that point, but I didn't realize that I needed to heal myself that way until I put this on. And I was like, oh, this is different. This is different. Like, and I feel that way with certain things, right? When it's, like I, I wore like a long sleeve shirt the other day with overalls. You know, and I was just like super comfy. It was fine, like I was modest. It was just, but I, like my whole body was covered. But it was, I was like, this is nice actually. It's like it just takes away the, the, the focus or burden on certain things. I just feel like I can focus on other people. But you don't more. lose the confidence that you gained when you started wearing clothes that showed off more of your body. Correct. Because I feel like it was an overcorrection. Like a dysregulated overcorrection. And then it became a habit. It's so like Jared Halverson's Proving Contraries where it's like you've got the, the the one on the one hand of like, don't tell me what to wear. And then on the other hand, you're like, I'll wear whatever the freak I want. Hmm. And he's always saying like, find the Goldilocks zone. It's, it is a kind of a pendulum swing. I, I, I understand what you mean by that word overcorrection. But hmm. where they become one is in that space of temperance and timelessness. I think timeless is actually a good word for what you've, described as yeah. pilgrimish and matronly. Agreed. And it's timeless, too, in the sense that one can rest there. I do notice the fidgetiness of the modern woman. There are, there are some who just feel so comfortable with all of their folds outlined in pu for public view. But <laughs> many, particularly maybe in the church, there's a lot of pulling, there's yes. a lot of adjusting, and... I see, as an observer, I think she doesn't appear to be at peace and comfortable in that attire. She doesn't seem to be just at home and at rest. And I, my mind goes back to the, the Marshall Rosenberg idea of don't let anyone cause you to submit or rebel, but we kind of go through it. We submit in ways that aren't totally authentic. So then to get to authentic, authenticity, we rebel, but we let go of some of the the ties and the tethers mm -hmm. that that 
give us a sense of belonging that make up that feeling of home. Home is a place where we totally belong and we're totally connected to everything. And a lot of times in that second half of our experience, the rebellious half, we're breaking connection. We're feeling disconnected from ourself, for, even from our authenticity. Although authenticity is what started the rebellion. They're all connected on the spectrum and it can start off well-intentioned. So we're not instantly, no one's going to be like, heck no, I don't want authenticity. It's, right? It's such an easy pill to swallow. Because it comes from a place that we didn't get what we needed and we fought for ourselves to get there. But I completely agree with you, but I think that I'm just so fascinated though about this place where you're sitting in now. Not just in the chair and the dress, but on the inside where are you sitting? It's been a, it's been slowly changing, I would say over the past couple of months. Because I really want to challenge my mindset of just no rules. <laughs> right. I'm just like Right. I just don't care. That's other people's responsibility to make up what they want about me. That's fine. And I'm not going to get heat stroke if I'm playing volleyball because wearing t-shirts or long sleeve is, I feel, I feel like I'm in a prison. And so I'm like, okay, there's going to be certain things that I just, for my own comfort, I need to not have complete coverage. I just, I can't. And especially in summer, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to die. But... But there's this place that the mind arrives at where we start with the submission, then we rebel to get to authenticity. And then in this, at the peak of our authenticity, we're like, we still feel like we haven't arrived because if we were totally free, we could choose those things that we initially rebelled against. We could choose to step back into modesty. We could choose to start keeping commandments again. We could choose to align our agency with covenants. We could do that. It's one of the options. And that that need for full freedom and full authenticity is ever persistent. And it really won't relent with just staying on one half of the spectrum or the pendulum. That need for freedom propels us to encompass the whole thing and say, I, I am life and death. I am light and dark. Yeah. I am masculine and feminine. Mm -hmm. I can submit and I can rebel. What does the situation require? What is the present need? And I can choose from the whole spectrum my response. Exactly. That's full freedom. That's mastery. Yeah. Well, and I think I think of like a metronome. Like you said, like we're, we're talking about a pendulum. And yeah. in the sense of it not being in a straight line, one and the other, it can go wherever, right? But the center point that that circle stays is where I want to be. And I, That's right. because of what I've chosen in my 20s and whatever, eh, I'd say my 20s, right? Like, I wanted to fix it. I wanted to go to the other side. I wanted to get to the end. And not necessarily shirking accountability or not seeing myself throughout the whole line, but just getting to a point that I wasn't controlled by what other people expected of me. Right. Or what other people Whether, whether the church or the world. Exactly. Or my parents or my friends or some or the idealistic yeah. story of what I said yes. was going to happen in my early life. Because that's where I felt a lot of grief. So I had, I had these expectations of myself or my, what my life would be. And I was very confident very early on. Of like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get a PhD. I'm going to do this. And like, none of that happened. Because God was like, oh, cutie, you're going to get married at 19 instead. Right? It's like that, that, <laughs> that running, that flight to the end. Yes, I learned a lot and accepted a lot and got some really important things that I needed. But I want to come back to that equilibrium, equilibrium. And the reality is, is that I haven't involved Christ in any of that. I tried to separate it. I tried to make it my journey or my acceptance. And that, that step back, that distance, he's like, no, 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 that's where I stand. You're in the middle. 
This is you. This is me. Come back. Come find me. And all that you do. Trust that I'll make up the distance. It's not just about you. It's physically impossible, mentally impossible, spiritually impossible, intellectually impossible for you to be anywhere else besides here. So that's part of it. How does that relate to modesty or your dress choice? Well, I'm making those choices about me. Yes, I love the confidence, but I like the attention. I'd be lying if I said I didn't. Everyone does. Everyone likes to be appreciated. You don't, you're not. You're not going to get the same attention in this dress as you're, as you've gotten in other outfits. And it's nice, like I said, to be appreciated. Like what I was wearing yesterday, right? To wear. Okay. It wasn't necessarily overly tight, but it showed my figure, and I still felt comfortable and confident. But I couldn't wait to take off those tights. You know, because yeah, they're tight, like from ankle. To waste, so just, you're uncomfortable. you know, I mean, and I'm just used to that. I, I, it's just normal for women's clothing. And there will be situations that that happens, but I still were able to wear my garments, like, without them showing. And I guess the distinction between things being tight has never really been a message of education or a message of, like, any, mm, maybe that's too much. It's the, it's the actual skin. That's where most of my messages come from, is the garment barriers, that's modest. Whatever that means. Is as long as your garments are covered, then you're modest. Hmm. Right? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but who's asking me? This is, well, that's not what we're doing right now. It's just... I... Um, it's not necessarily a pain point, but it's a realization of if a man told me what to wear, I'd be like, yeah, we're not going to do that. Is this possible? You know I mean? but, is, 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 the, is it possible that the only accurate education on the topic would be to say that it's really about why you're wearing it? If it's for the attention, the sexual attention we could call it immodest. And if it's not, we could call it modest as a possibility. Of Correct. A I really like that. I'm not actually. telling you. No, I like that actually, because the realization is <sighs> it's a difference between being wanted and being respected. That's what it is. Wanted in the moment sexually. Or it doesn't even have to be sexually. But just, for me, I thrive in authenticity. I don't want that to be an unhealthy authenticity, but... Because at the end of the day, every female body wants to reproduce. And the sex drive is about attracting male sexual attention. 100% it is. So, it's, we're not talking about an either-or, right? Where you say it's the, the choice to, about what to wear and distinguishing whether it's a modest a modest come from or desire is about being like attracting that attention or attracting respect for men. It's not an either or, but, um, but it can be done with discernment. Tell me about that. Well, for me, it's like, I, I want people to know what they're getting into. I want them to see me and know me. And understand that what you see is what you get. Physically in the bedroom? I don't bedroom. want to waste time. Physically in the bedroom? No, no. I mean, just overall. I mean, that can apply to it, right? Oh, you're saying... Like, if a man sees this me... This is one of your values that you operate from. Is yes. Is that the way people engage with me on day, mo day one, moment one, that's how it's going to be forever. There's not going to be some other page that comes out later because I'm manipulating or managing. Their... Correct. Okay. And it's not coming from a place of insecurity or manipulation. It's just the fact of, I love myself. I'm here. I'm showing up. Right. 
And, it, and this is this is who I am. All of it. The all way I dress, it. the body, and the insides too. The internal Correct. mind. Okay. Correct. I am, I'm with you. I hear you. But as I've been changing spiritually and developing better spiritually for myself, just how I feel personally, it's like that. It's like it just no longer feels like my story completely anymore. Where it's been that way, I feel like for a while, as far as this step of self empowerment and fierce self acceptance and you know, it's okay that I got divorced and blah, blah, blah. Like these things, right? And those are just small examples. It doesn't run through my head most of the time. It's something that I don't... Why would Christ change that? Because it's not about people accepting me anymore. It's not about changing the narrative of, okay, this is all of me. It's... It's changing my name tag. It's changing my name tag. I want to change my name tag. I don't want it to say Paige. Will you pull the hair back on your left side? So the audience can see your beautiful face. Thank you. Beautiful hair too. Thank you. It's all clean. <laughs> what name tag difference. do you want now? Well, the thing for me is that I want, I want my spiritual self to be seen too, because I feel like everything else, the three categories, like mental, emotional, and physical, whatever, right? Okay. All of that is readily available, especially like when I'm at work and it's that fierce intellectual, like, oh, Paige is going to handle it. She's going to do this. She's going to teach. She's going to mentor. Go ask her. She knows everything. She's emotionally, you wear your emotions on your sleeve. Right? I'm up front, there. Physically. Just like showing up. Yeah, physically, right? nothing to hide in. Yeah. All of it. And I feel like when, I, when I'm in that space, I step into a masculine mindset as far as work and being decisive and okay. being intellectual and being incredibly just analytical, right? Like, and I feel sometimes when I'm wearing those, like either tight or form fitting or like they're still feminine. It's just, they're, they're different than this. This is very like, warm oh, and ethereal. I made you some baked goods. <laughs> like, <laughs> Did you or this in the car? No, <laughs> I would. I make amazing cookies. Why are you getting my hopes I make amazing cookies. Just not the last the one outfit, just ever, but to be fair, isn't complete really complete without a tray of warm baked cookies. Yeah. Like I need some, I need a pie. <laughs> I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Um, but it's, it's the, the way that. So the name tag, you were, I asked you like, what name tag do you want to wear? I mean, I don't feel like I am able to wear the name tag of Christ, but that's what, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Right. Like you, that's what you want. That's what I want. I see it in other people. I love that. I admire it. I, I want that to be more readily accessible to where it's not just me telling the story. I mean, yeah, I'll share it if someone asks or if they're like, why are you the way that you are? Like you just have, you have this engaging light about you. And to me, I can be like, it's God. Like I know who I am. Like I love myself. Right. I can explain that, but I want people to... How is that different from the way you were when you chose to wear the clothes that you used to wear? Here. It's not necessarily that people can't see the spiritual self, but it's the sense of, like, I forget that I'm supposed to be keeping that a part of me and that I want to keep that a part of me. Like, yeah, so, so when you make the choice to wear this dress versus the other dress... You're choosing Christ in your mind? And yes. And you're bringing more light in? or Correct. I'm letting him be a part of this situation. I'm letting him be a part of my journey. Whereas before, it was like, nope, this oh. is all about me. Tell me how pretty I am. Um, and it's not necessarily that I need that specific verbiage or specific feedback. Feedback. I mean, sometimes, yes. Like, if I'm looking for it, like, if I worked really freaking hard and be like, so, just a little. I so, mean, just a little. So what, Christ, Christ comes what? in, you put the name tag on, and then you don't 
need that. I forget about myself. I don't abandon myself, but I forget about myself and that I put my pen down. I'm not the one writing the story anymore. And, and that feels better to And you. it feels so much better. So before the, your clothing choice was a, a presentation of an authentic aspect of you, but now you want to lay that you down and pick up Christ or make it not so much about you? Yes. Because my mind still stays in my body. My brain is still here. I still would be that analytical, responsible leader. You are a leader. In, in that way. But it just feels di so different wearing something like this versus what I normally would. Because that makes me feel powerful. That makes me feel like maybe it's coming from a place of mental or intellectual insecurity. Because I'm like, okay, well, if I'm wearing this, then surely I'm meant to be here. Like dressing for the job that I want. Okay. And so, so, so why choose this then? Why choose this dress and the accompanying mindset? Don't you want to feel powerful? I mean, I don't feel powerless. But why? Why? Why would? Why is it? A, is it an upgrade? And if so, why? Because it readjusts how I truly want to be seen. Deep down in my spirit, how I truly want to be seen is that I want to be respected and revered in a healthy way, not in a sense of worship me because I have an hourglass figure or because I'm curvy or because of this. It, it changes the boxes around. Like, you remember when you and I talked about adjusting I maybe we did maybe we didn't but I don't recall like especially with boxes. relationships like the boxes that are filled typically spiritual intimacy is the last when it should be the biggest on the base yes like spiritual intimacy intellectual mental emotional yes. physical and the, okay. the physical so, box is tiny so you were being <laughs> you were being seen physically but being seen emotionally, spiritually, mentally, people weren't taking the time to look for you there because they were kind of just focused on the on the physical that you were presenting with or leading with. Yeah, it's like maybe the the physical asking, was fifty, but then you. all the other three were in the fifty percent, which only gives them such a small. Percentage. And you want to fill them up more. Correct. And you still want the phys You still want to be seen physically. You still want your hourglass shape to be honored and and and. Um, cherished <laughs> for lack of a more graphic word but but you're pro you're you're craving wow. to be seen more now in other categories is that correct yes and i'm not craving to be seen as much anymore i'm i'm, that's, that's I'm craving what? to show up for myself the way that i truly want to be and the way that I am changing, I want that to reflect that. I don't want to just come into a room and be like, worship me, <laughs> I'm amazing, right? Because that's such a worldly I got the temptation. God bod. Yeah, it's like, and it's, and it's because I've got, or because I've received so much attention that way. Not so much, but I received mm -hmm. attention that way. Yeah, you got, you got the body for that attention. Right? I mean... And it's like if ever there was a woman who could command attention with her body, it's you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Not in this dress. <laughs> it, Different attention. And, and I want to know why. It, it's it's just that. How could it possibly be better than commanding that attention when you walk in a room with the god bod, all outlined with form-fitting clothes? Because it stunts my growth. It limits me spiritually. And I never had that, who like, <laughs> year ago, Paige, a couple months ago, Paige, yeah. would be like, you would never, like, 
<laughs> I'm with because, you in the astonishment. Like, go on. It's just like, yeah. Because I'm astonished. Well, because modesty was, like I said, such a. It felt like a repression. A it captivity. Felt like a cat. Uh, I'm a prisoner. Free the nipple. Yeah. Okay, that's a little too much, but um, it's the same pattern of thinking, though. Yeah. You drew your line here, but. It, but that pattern of thinking took you here, and it just takes someone else to the free the nipple. It's all the same pattern of thought, though. Yeah. And you're drawing a line and heading back for a reason, and I want to know the reason. Well, and I'm also trying to trust more, because I've been praying about it with Heavenly Father, because I'm like, okay, you said there was supposed to be modest and stuff. I just, that's really hard for me. <sighs> Pouty child that's like, fine, I'll go clean my room. Because having, a, I like that having bring, a room is nice if it's clean. <laughs> like, I, I like that you bring that nice. part of you to the prayer. Yeah. I do too. It's, I, uh, it's how we get the best responses. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it's that I, I just, I'm exhausted from having to write all this. Like I said, I, I want to set my pen down. I want to set down that, that writer's quill of... This is who I am. This is what this means. Authoring your own life. Authoring my own life. And obviously, I'm like, I have a super muted personality and I'm not stubborn <laughs> at all. I have. <laughs> that was a good one. Obviously, I have no strong opinions. <laughs> None. Gosh. Um, but it's that. I just, I just feel, I, I just feel different. I feel better. I feel like I can adjust my boxes the way I want and attract the kind of partner that I want that will want me for those reasons too, right? Because that level of respect that I have for myself is going to be where that connection happens. Not because they're just like, well, oh my goodness, well, look at you. Aren't you just an infinity sign waiting to be explored, right? Like... <laughs> Yikes! That is, I never thought of the infinity. Sign like as I could sexy. get, I could get, I could get on that road and yeah. just all like for the rest of time and mm -hmm. all eternity. That's an eternal loop, ma'am. Like, gosh. Your body is a <laughs> wonderland. wonderland. Yeah. Your body's the hero's journey. Your body's the infinity sign. But, but. Oh, that is so sexy. I've never thought of the female body that way, even though we've talked about it. I've seen the female That's body as the, surprising. the circle and the curve. But I take oh. the curve, but I hadn't just gone further with the infinity. Oh, yeah. It's and, definitely and, that eternal round. Bit. And I want to say this, too, about the female body. It is a representation of all that is sexy about life and living. So imagine a child two years or under. From the moment they wake up, they want to be alive. Why? Because mm -hmm. living is so thrilling. It's exciting. They yeah. don't want to go to sleep for a nap or for, at the end of the yeah. night. Why? Because they are electrified with the delight and the joy. And they wouldn't use this word, but I'm using that word. The sexiness of life. It's true. So the female form is that. Yeah. It is the manifestation of that so as wondrous and adventurous and delightsome as life can be for any human so too is the female body for a carnal man it's true so it's I mean, not like you could give that up you're still naked under any clothes you choose to wear agreed and when and when you're sharing that with a, a man a future husband all of the excitement of living com combines with the carnality of his animal, and you're going to be all of life that he loves and that. Agreed. So, but whatever you choose to cover that with does can't take it away. And maybe that's exactly. Where, and maybe that's where the mindset here. of the immodest woman goes wrong is that. She thinks, well, if everyone isn't seeing it and reaping the benefits of it all the time, I'm lost. I lose my power. Yes. Okay. 
Spice Burnett in the front. Um, so sexuality can equal safety. From an unhealthy perspective, right? Women, especially trying to attract a mate, if they don't show a little bit or if, if they're completely covered up, they're considered prude. Like, oh man, like she would never know what to do with her own body or know how to experience pleasure or know what. I'm hearing you say that a woman um, has to use her body to attract a Sometimes, mate. yes. I would say yes. Because there has to be some level of polarity, right? I like, don't agree with that. Really? At all. So if if a woman just constantly wore all long sleeve all the time, never showed off a figure, never even anything flattering, just pillowcases, sheets. Let's say a cardboard box. A cardboard box. She literally wears a cardboard, a cardboard box. box. From f bottom of foot to top so of head. So you how as a moves? carnal man, you couldn't see how she moves. That's the that's the main point of attraction for that anyway. Or when our bodies move, it's an incredible, it, it, incredible it, thing. It, it has no bearing. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't believe you for a second. Okay. There's no way. Okay. You are you are too pretty. No, you no, care way no. too much. You I I recall that. There's now. no way. <laughs> yeah, she could just be like so ugly. It's only her spirit I'm attracted to. It's oh. fine. Okay. You're such a liar. <laughs> I'm not lying. I. Miss her, I'm remembering the phrasing of your question, which was, that wouldn't appeal to my carnal man. Of course you're right, if you're asking about my carnal man. Yes. But I am, <laughs> listen to me, if my carnal man has any involvement in my choice to marry a woman, he's going to mess things up for me. I am not wanting to lead with my carnal man in marriage selection as a man who is more than an animal. Now, out in the animal kingdom, men who haven't yet found the other side of their soul, which is the divine side, and so mm -hmm. they're operating as pure animal, what you say is absolutely correct and yes. accounts for all of the women wearing form-fitting clothes that cover half or less of their body in public. Even that, just a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot. Okay, but that but is what accounts something. for it, is the animal man. That animal man desire is why we get women just that way. I, yeah. And that is absolutely correct. Because in they'll the mating, attract but, a protector. But these men who are running around operating as animals aren't marrying women, typically. First of all, they marry them for that, in their trophy wives. Yes. Wise. Or, more and more, these men just aren't marrying. Because longevity cannot be established on that alone. Well, and then they could just they could just do the same thing. They could just repeat the pattern with someone younger it, later on in life. And they do. Right? And they do. And they do. Yeah, Even that's they more do a worldly view for sure. So, so when longevity becomes of interest, more and more men are wanting to retain meaningful contact with their offspring. And in order to do that, a Lululemon girl isn't going to isn't going to cut it. She's not bringing what it takes to ensure that a man can stay in contact with his kids. None, and Because not what it takes to establish that has nothing to do with her cleavage or her form that's being made visible with the outfit. Alternatively, in addition to what you were just talking about, I'm curious if confidence comes into that too, right? Because we're, we're talking about modesty and we're talking about that choice and we're talking about what is perceived, whether internal or external. To be acted upon or to act, right? I feel like that act of being like, yep, this is what I'm at, is is that masculine mindset, right? Whereas... I see now why you equated it with your work description. Earlier. Yes, okay. exactly. Because it helps me tell that story better. It helps ah, write the story for me. That's how your acting is. You're in charge. You got the pen. Yes. Ah, it's your life. It's It makes it easier for me to maintain that persona of what I think yes. is expected of me when it's not, but that's the narrative that I'm continuing to create for myself. Agency so. and acting is masculine. I'll give you that. But I think 
what it really is is the ego. Oh, I agree. Which can all, which is also masculine. I, or I can be mm, viewed in relationship as masculine. Definitely agree. So, for example, when the ego or the natural man is swallowed up in the will of Christ, that's because of Christ's feminine engagement with us. He's so loving. He's so kind. Yeah. He very meets warm. us where we are. Mm -hmm. We can't push him away. He's yeah. like water in that sense. And yeah. the ego is this very hard. I'm gonna get it done. I'm the man. I'm in charge. I'm a submarine. I, What's uh, up? Yeah, girl, girl power, whatever. Yeah. That egoic, that egoic approach to living is very hard, and and it's that's masculine. If it's hard, it's masculine. and I think that part of that narrative that's been twisted, at least for what I've experienced, is that to have confidence is to be masculine. And men want confident women because, at least with me, I want someone that's going to love themselves more than they love me at first, right? Like, can, can I pause you? But I just, I really want to speak to what you just said about the masculinity of confidence. Of, okay. It's feminine confidence is, it, it's muted. But yeah. But it's, it's self confidence. And as, a, as Christians, we have we are blessed and endowed to experience a confidence that's higher than self confidence. Yes, it, exactly. It, it it encompasses and includes, but extends far beyond the limited scope of self confidence, which is the ego presenting itself as I know what's best for me. Y'all pay attention and agree. Yes, which is kind of the energy that prompts, that's the story that we're given. <laughs> the energy that prompts the clothing choices. Yes. Of. Exactly. And in a way that imprints us in, imprisons us into that narrative that's not coming from God. It's like dressed in this amazing, like, well, look how wonderful it is, and you'll be respected, and you'll be... Well, it's, the ego captures females and males differently, so the ego captures... Basically, the, the, the basic needs of our animal, uh, driven by the desire to procreate, yeah. the ego takes that and goes, and God lets that occur for a time, but when we're ready to join with God and be a partnership and put his name tag on mm -hmm. instead of just our own, yeah, we wear both name tags. When we're That's ready true. for that, he takes that basic carnal drive and teaches us how to make it sustainable and give it long-lasting life rather than just the short-term immediate gratification of a, a man's attention out in public or the one night stand or the whatever the way we do in the animal kingdom exactly so the self-confidence is the way we present as animals of it's kind of this dog eat dog world who can be the toughest male who can be the prettiest female and that's what yeah. I, that's that's what i wanted that's what i wanted to say is that as men when the ego is when we're presenting as with our ego it's about money and power and because, respect. And, and resources, right? Because that's what attracts a mate. So that's the animal. Mm -hmm. That's that's the animal drive. But for the female, it's 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 pinnacle beauty. How much how much sexual attraction can I get? Because that's that's what her reproductive organs are saying. The egg is like, bring the sperm to me, like Especially when we're ovulating. Oh my gosh, it's the worst. <laughs> right. And, and so, so the male, the male animal is like, look how much I have to give. That's, that's this endless supply of seed, right? And the female is like, look how much, look how much you want to come to me. Look how much you, look how desirable I am. And so this, that's really just the, the, the reproductive organs expressing themselves in our. Something additionally, all right, sorry, are you done? No, well, the, it's just, it, but it's ego. My point is, is that. My ego in my relationship with God needs to be swallowed up in mm -hmm. his will. And your ego as a female in your relationship with God needs Correct. to be swallowed up. But how our egos present is different because okay. the ego is, is using our bodies and our bodies are polar opposites. So true. So, something so when we're talking about like spiritual levels... Okay. I don't want to forget. 
Continue. I'm I also done. don't want to interrupt. I'm done. You sure? I am sure. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Uh, when you were just expressing that differentiation of, okay, I'm beautiful, I'm ethereal, come to me, right? I think that women are so strongly needing to be seen intellectually. That's still a part of us, right? That, that expanding, that ever expanding as polarity. As more than just the body. As more than just the, the body. Babies. That makes the babies. Like, that's what we want. And so if we're, if, if we have to be seen that way, and that, that masculine twist on immodesty is how we do it, that's going to continue to happen. What do you mean? Explain, like, what is the twist and what do men have to do with like, what is the twist here that the women make and how does that affect them? Okay, women? because at least from my mindset, what I assume or what we feel like the narrative has been. Is yeah, just speak about your experience. It's just like, okay, mm -hmm. but if you're only beautiful or if you're only whatever, then that intellectual or those masculine traits, which we all have. This is my point. Are not seen. No, well, this, no they are, but they're used for the extent of their value. So they attract the man who wants to copulate with you at that moment because that's what you're offering at that moment and then he's done and he's like thanks that was great but where's the life lived together where's the shared meaning and joy of a lifetime and children and posterity it's it's absent so yeah. it's not so there can be more and when you want more that's when you have to start using more than your ego you have to use your divine male your divine fe fem female yeah and you have to start attracting people on that level. And I think modesty and clothing choice, particularly for females, has very much to do with that. And I agree. It's just, I, I think... Which it goes back to why I said I would like to be able to make a choice about who I mate with long term, even if she lives inside of a cardboard box. Because long term, what does that... Animal it, it has to be in the middle. Have to do with it, it. it can't be that extreme. It's for <laughs> you personally. That is such crap. And maybe. okay, maybe. Um, okay. I will. Like, I will. There's maybe it's a separate. What if she was? What if she was three hundred pounds? Listen. I will. I will conclude by this is my final statement on that. Okay. I. I lead with spirit in my choice of mate. I don't lead with the carnal man. So how much carnal man needs to be in the marriage so that the sex can be spicy and yeah. and whatever. Um, I, I, I'm not prepared to conclude with a statement on that, but I am prepared to conclude with this statement, namely that it cannot be the leading factor. If I it is, I don't feel any sense of safety about remaining in contact with my posterity. Because what kind of woman she is, is what will be making the choices in family court or in daily living, not what she looks like as a woman. What she looks like as a woman has bearing in the bedroom, but from this moment till the end of time, what bears what, ha what comes to bear there has nothing to do with what her physical appearance looks like. It has to just it has to do with what's inside the cardboard box. Mm, that's right. So I could make pro like if it was one or the other, choose a wife based on your animal drive toward her sexually, or make a choice based on what you get to know through a cardboard box. I would choose the woman in the cardboard box mm -hmm. if it had to be an either or. Because that's an eternal housing of that soul, not a temporary one. Because, because what I will be living with, well, first of all, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get what's inside the box after marriage, right? In terms of we're talking about chastity and having sex after marriage. Maybe we shouldn't have put a box analogy, but continue. Too many on, too many double. Yeah, too many layers <laughs> I just didn't realize that until now, and I'm like, ah! but, but I would talk to her. Through the veil, through the cut, through the hijab, through the abaya, right? There's whole populations of females on the planet, and they are incredibly sexualized. Even just that, I would speak with her. I would get to know her, and I would judge based on all of that about her emotional, 
her emotional figure, her mental figure, her spiritual figure, and how that relates to my needs for reproductive safety. And by reproductive safety, I mean, am I going to be able to stay connected with my posterity? Mm -hmm. Because me, Justin, I, I want that. Yeah. I choose to do that. Not every man, this isn't a factor for every male. There are males who are happy to reproduce and not be connected. Mm -hmm. But even those men, I think, are very disconnected from their other half. They're not really I complete souls. And all the men that I know and interact with very much want to have relationships with their children as they grow up. And they have to do it through the, the female partner with whom they reproduce. So gauging and judging her character is everything when that's your goal. Yeah. <clears throat> it's just, maybe it's that women need to, or not women need to, but I, I do feel like there is this pain point of see me besides my beauty or see me besides how attractive I try to be or see the effort I put in to appease this story. Do you think that might be easier for a woman to obtain if she covers her body and leads with those things as opposed to leading with her physical body? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Like, we've had this weird, toxic narrative of... Like, girl power, females rule the world, like, Beyonce's girls rule the world, right? And it's all about but they are all the taking voices back our sex. Exactly. It's all about taking back our physical story of, okay, like, you want us to be sexy? We are going to be sexy. Like, it's, it's like it's, it's heightened or it's injected <laughs> with adrenaline. And the reality is it comes from a place of at least for me, that's a pain point of, I don't want to just be seen for all of that. So if I'm, if, if to be seen intellectually and mentally, if that's what I, if that's what I want, I'm going to get it by dressing this way. Which way? With power, with intention of. Describe it. So. Describe the types of clothing that you mean. Uh, something that's like really flattering on my figure. <laughs> something that's, people are just like, wow, that's, form wow, fitting. you got, yeah, form fitting. So if I mean, you, not necessarily that, if but you just, just, if you wear something fitting. form figure fitting, then men are going to see you intellectually and emotionally. Yes, which not is, it is not necessarily true, but that's what the mindset, I'm just saying. Oh, that was a mindset. That was a mindset oh. or that was a, and well, women have thought that. Yes. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> that sucks that any woman ever had to think that because at least for me like i said it's not i don't so know far if it's from the truth <laughs> i know but like you think about all of these corporate boss women right that it's like oh yeah like i used to have this phrase i'm like i just want to be a badass businesswoman in heels like because that imagery and that physical narrative matches the masculine intellectual analytical needs of us females that's the ego presenting in a masculine assertive this is this is this is what i know to do to get my needs met and i'm in charge of my life and for females it's heightening the beauty the sexualization and the getting the male attention yeah so like if we're expected to be beautiful and sexy we're going to weaponize it to get what we want yeah, and, and the ego is a weaponization of me getting mine, which is full-on ego, the ego's motto, motto. It's like the, the banner that the ego carries, me get, I get mine, I get mine. Yeah. And for females, it's weaponizing their sexuality. And honestly, And for this males, is, it's weaponizing their power. Yeah, and, and for me, like I said, this is mostly just my personal experience. I assume that some females out there would share said experience, but the reality is, is, this, is this, is, this is a continuing organic Journey and you're sharing what's alive in you now. Correct. And I'm so grateful, Paige. And, <laughs> you're welcome. But Go on. And it's so interesting because, like, I didn't even. It's not like something I've been truly pondering, but something I've been noticing has been changing, or something that I've been noticing. I desire to have better. Let me dispel that thought. I, th I think it's being dispelled in you for you as you come closer to Christ. But I'd like to say it out loud. Okay. The thought 
that inhabits female minds that if I wear a figure fitting outfit, men are going to see me for my intellectual and emotional beauty. In addition to my physical beauty. Yeah, wrong. As far from true as a person can get. That is so far removed from reality that it would be impossible to call it anything other than crazy. What it does is it calls forth the animal aspect of the man, and then they meet and do their thing, and the aspects of the man that can appreciate your emotional and, um, and intellectual figure or, or character, the aspects of the man that are, that are able to see you on the inside and appreciate you on the inside aren't what are called forth with that outfit. Exactly. But that's, like I said, a previous but story. But you know what outfit does call that forth in me? <laughs> that one. And you know what I think is so fascinating is how so and so deeply you already know that. Yes. And I think of that line from um, Sadia Khan that we will probably do a commentary on in the future where she says the difference between men and women is that women believe their lies more than men. So listen, this when you wore the dress last week, we had this whole conversation. Yes, let me, which I'm let, not proud of, but yes. You, we were in a group of friends, and you walked away multiple times such that the whole group of friends noticed that something... That, 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 please let me finish. <laughs> that something was requiring attention. And I came over to see what it was, and you wanted to be told how beautiful you looked in the dress. And I did. And you did look a certain type of beautiful. But when you walked into just now, today, an hour ago, whatever, however long we've been having this conversation, I said to you, I like that dress better than your, the dress you wore at the wedding. And you were like, I know. I, I, know, I knew that 100%. <laughs> But the, the, the part of me that sees the other aspects of you, your mind and your heart, and your, beneath the surface of the flesh, mm -hmm. is called forth with modesty of appearance in you. And yet you, your response indicates to me that you, you know that so clearly. And mm -hmm. I don't know for how long you've known it, but you literally were like, I know you like this dress better than the other one. And it's, but at the same time, it's and like... Down. What's that? I said, hands down. It's a modest mind in addition to a modest body. It's not just that. So that's where I feel like both connect here. And as, as far as like the dress stuff, it's more of like the effort, I would say. I'd say it's more of the effort. And that's where most females come into you're, now you're explaining Disconnection. Why, you why you were the way you were last week. And I'm not proud of that. Like, I, I shouldn't need that. I and, shouldn't... I'm, and I'm not saying it was shameful. Yeah. like I'm not judging any of this. But at the same time... Just... I'm just observing yeah. that last week you verbalized how you would have liked to have heard words about how beautiful you looked on that day. And yes, it was a wedding and you were a bridesmaid and you had done yourself up and put forth all this effort. And you did look great and Thank very you. hourglassy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I love me some good hourglass. That's funny. Um, but, but when I said yeah. to you, I like this dress better than that dress, you didn't respond with like a, oh, thank you. I feel so sexy. It was like an Eeyore, like, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me about well, it's that. because I didn't. I didn't need it. I, I wasn't looking for it. I didn't want it. Because my story is complete before I ever walked into this house. And I just want to say to you, Paige, this is the greatest content on the topic of modesty I could have ever dreamed of producing. And like all the ideas you've shared in this last hour about the connection in your soul between your choice of dress and then your state of mind, I'm finding very intriguing and I am finding very shapely. 
<laughs> and emotionally, I am I also attracted to a woman who walks in through the door totally complete and confident and not requesting sexual attention. Like, that is attractive to me. Well, and the thing for me is I'm realizing that there's some healing that needs to take place there. Like, I've hurt my own feelings over the years of saying, oh, well, this stamp of what's going to get me what I want is this story. And the reality is so different. It's so... Ah, it's just, it's such a false narrative and it's such a, uh, it's just, it's like tissue paper of just. I wonder what the story is that will get you all that you want. I'm still writing it, but I don't have to write it all the time. Remember? I don't have to, I don't have to write the pen to paper I will all stay, this time. I will but, stay tuned. But it's. I'm watching. It's that. What I truly want to be seen for is this. Your upper left pectoral yes, tissue? Yes, it's technically my sternum. You have a mole there? But I do! I do! How ironic! I've had people be like, you have brownie on your... And I'm like, no, it's a mole. Sorry. They're like, see, now no one can see it. And when I ask you if I have brownie on my chest. But, well, then how can um, you be known for it? <laughs> <laughs> the reality is, I am willing to see this more for myself and that like those pain points that I've created for myself and the ways I've abandoned myself I've never tied to modesty before this conversation <laughs> before I've never I've never seen it as self-abandonment and those abandonment wounds that I have throughout life that I always thought were coming from other people or something that I'm perpetuating and recreating a pattern for. Wow. And when I take that step to say, well, oh, this image of me is what you're going to see, not my heart, and not what's really squishy and the soft white underbelly of this glowing ball in my chest that truly wants to be known and seen and vulnerable in that place. And that's what I am finally approaching with love and curiosity and contentment. Instead of, don't think about her, think about her. Because this will protect you. This will give you power. This will hand you a weapon this will put you on the offense or defense or whatever. This will prepare you for war in that world out there where people have hurt this. So we're not going to let them see it. We're going to let them see her. Well, that's the goddess I would love to worship. And the reality is, is that's the kind of person that a man would trust. Because us females, we have every ability and convenience of feelings and expressing them. There's so much support for females, emotionally, mentally, whatever. Whereas so much of the message of men in society is just, oh, well, you're just a man, you just take care of it, and you don't care about your feelings. Except and... this is a place where men can come to get all of their needs met. You're a little different. Um, I'm here for men. I know. But, and it's just, but, but that's the truth of it. That is the yeah. ultimate truth of, like you were saying, trusting a woman enough to place well, her seed into. And the family and the family court system is, is in the hands of the women. It 100% is. So I've, I've heard it said out of the mouth of, of an advocate of, I mean, she's out there shaping family court systems. Um, I heard this on the Red Pill documentary. I don't know if you've seen that yet, but it, no. the woman, it's a female director, and she started as a, identifying as a feminist, and she was curious about this subsection of our culture called the men's rights activists. She started interviewing them, and 
and then going home and journaling about what she heard and she she dropped the title feminist she ends up now she's a men's advocate and um mm-hmm. but she interviewed a woman a feminist who's who says that once the seed leaves the man he has no rights to say anything about what happens to that seed so females have this wonderful benefit of always knowing who their offspring are always remaining connected to their offspring throughout their lives and men don't have that well, we also physically advantage. bond with them like through breastfeeding like many advantages they're a continuous part of us of forever of connecting with your offspring yeah. being female not that only males do not them. enjoy yeah males biologically are separate i mean when the seed leaves it, it I mean, that's a visible indicator of, of a more encompassing reality, which is that in all ways, he is to remain separate from his offspring unless his, mate, his mating partner chooses to act as a, as a mediary and a bridge gap, kind of like how Christ is a bridge gap between the Father's children on earth and the Father yeah. who is not... Um, there with them so trust becomes pivotal in mate selection for a man who has interest in remaining connected to his offspring correct and how a woman manages or doesn't manage her sexual her sexuality is the core of what that trust is built on and because there's not a difference whereas because the only way a man can know that his offspring is his offspring is if he trusts her word. And so he's looking to, a man who is looking for integrity in a mate is looking to see if um, a woman's words and her actions align. And <clears throat> modesty is a part of that. So for example, if, if a woman is operating on the belief that if I present my attractive female figure to a man in public, he's gonna start. He's gonna see that to start with, but then it will evolve into him seeing me emotionally and him seeing me intellectually. Yes. And if if a man like that is that is false. It it just literally doesn't operate that way. So if a woman is up, op- we know that we know the women who are operating that way by the choice of clothes they wear in public. I think it's necessarily false, but I don't think it's helpful. I mean, you're, I, maybe you personally. Yeah, let's that take is, my, let, let me explain the male perspective. Because I was going to say, because I was like, I've had different experience that way, me personally, but I don't know if it applies to all men or if you're speaking just personally for yourself. There is a subset of men who get simpy after sexual contact with a woman who presents with her sexuality or leads with her sexuality. But that's because these men hyper, they hyper prioritize the sexuality and physical attractiveness of, course they do. of the woman. But they're not in what are going to end up being long-term relationships. No, they're they a, haven't done this either. Correct, correct. So so the women who, who lead with their sexuality are attracting men who hyper-value sexuality in a woman, and they have a thing for a time. Yeah. But it's not like what we're building here at Relationship Consulting Services. It's not, it has nothing to do with cinching family ties over the course of time has nothing to do with growing um, intimacy and romance in a compounding way over the course of a lifetime or eternity. It's, it's a very short-lived thing. What um, a man who's looking to have a marriage that lasts a lifetime and just stay in contact with his offspring, he, when he observes a woman's choice of clothing and she's clearly presenting publicly leading with her sexual with her sexuality he understands that his relation his future relationship with his offspring is at risk because this woman is operating from the belief that that sexual spark that she's trying to generate with her clothing choice is going to she she's operating from the thought that it will grow into more but the thought is false coding. It doesn't actually play out that way in life ever. So the coding has to change. 
the coding has to be a woman presents publicly with, I'm trustworthy, I'm a woman of emotional wellness and power, I'm a woman of intellectual wellness and power. Yeah, I get jiggy with it in the bedroom too, but that's for another, that's for a later conversation if you ask me out, you want to see me where I need to be seen most and foremost first. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that is a paradigm flip. It's literally you taking the spectrum of physical attraction and then emotional and all the yeah. other immaterial attraction and you flip it and you literally go the opposite way. It's mating for the moment versus mating for life. Yeah. Yeah. No, I completely <laughs> agree. It's just, like I said, I don't know if this applies to other females, but for me personally, like this has been those series of false narratives or false negatives or whatever that I've convinced myself or just gotten yeah. used to, yeah, like, to believe, yeah. it's, or it just got into a habit or I'm like, well, I can't afford to just replace my whole wardrobe. And or, the culture is like your backwind. So the reality is, is it, my intentions for how I'm seen coming back to the, the question of, of all of that is, my intentions are not to create waves of being seen. I just, I already see myself how I want to see myself. So when I arrived, what you said had no matter. Which accounts for the tone. So you... The tone? The tone. I well, know. I know. <laughs> so, so before you were stepping into the room wanting to be seen so that you could feel seen. But the difference today is you already see yourself and love yourself. So that validation that you would have looked for from the room, now you're giving it to yourself and you're stepping in, not needing that, stepping in to, to be seen with, for something else or to give or to serve or mm -hmm. I don't know. You tell me. Yeah. Well, I, I just want to say, Paige, that I am deeply grateful for what you've shared with me. Like openly just... Yeah. Super vulnerable. Yeah. Super controversial. Uh, not easy letting me record it. Um, but personally, I feel deeply satisfied that you would let me watch this change in you, this struggle... Just as it is, and I have, and I'm not judging it, and I'm yeah. not. Um, it's it, it's it's kind of a different derobing. It's another kind of nakedness. Yeah. But to me, it's 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 far more thrilling. Yeah. And I imagine too that it it must be difficult in some regard. Maybe not. Maybe it's easy, but but. It is. It has moved me. I admire it. But the gift of you just laying your experience out before me and the viewers is a million times better than anything I could have ever written. Thank you for for hearing me. It's it's definitely been an interesting interesting journey. I mean, even from the time we started to get to know each other as friends, and you know. Less fall. Yeah. It's like, I feel like that person is very different than this person that's sitting in front of you. Just with, with those changes and it's... Me too. <sighs> I feel like a different person too. Yeah. It's yeah. just... I feel like Byron Katie has made me a new man. Yeah. But the reality is, is... Modesty is always going to be a controversial topic because it comes into the form of possibly subjecting finalism to agency, like what we discussed earlier. Of right, like, like that box, if, right? But so if you're on the one end of the spectrum or the other, you're boxed in either way. This is the problem with the polarized political condition of America right now. Is 100%. if you're on the extreme left or the extreme right your your minds are getting more and more closed off. A hundred percent. This is why lefts are moving to the middle, rights are moving to the middle, you've got the rhinos, you've got the because the the goal is to take the ends and seal them. Yeah. To exactly. where you can see this way of thinking 
but also see its opposite. And that's what Katie Byron's, uh, Byron Katie's work is. You, she has you take your thoughts that are creating the suffering, put them on paper, and then, and then look at the opposite. Well, what that does is it literally stretches your mind from half open to full open. And that's where agency occurs. When you're just half, there's no choice. There's just the one option. Exactly. So you have to do this work that extends your awareness beyond a, pol a polarized half of the spectrum to see the whole spectrum, which sort of wraps the whole thing into this one great whole, so that agent, so that you can see both halves and then choose. You have to have the two options, and that's where agency yeah. comes in. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's not like sexy page it needs to be like snuffed out. No, there's going to be exactly. moments and seasons and times for sexy page to have her full expression. Cause that's not just my body. But then there's this other page of sexy mind page, sexy heart page, sexy spirit page that exactly. also needs her full expression. And, yes. and when you're just, you're just walking around life in Lululemon's only offering up your sexy, sexy body, you, you're like starving your sexy spirit, your sexy mind, your sexy heart. Or if you're a, a nun or a prude and, and, and well, nuns literally swear off sex, yeah. but you're just presenting your, your sexy spirit, your sexy mind, your sexy heart, but you never get that bedroom life. Well, then that's not a whole creature either. The soul is... Exactly! <laughs> that's why I want to be a sex therapist so badly! It's because you can't separate it from yourself. It's a part of you. God created you that way on purpose. You can't. And the nuns and the priests who swear off of that other half, the carnal half, it, that sexuality comes up coming out sideways. Right? That's why we it's have all such, these legal cases. Yeah, seriously. So, so it really is, all, when you talk about a holistic approach, the whole thing is spirit... And body. Yes, but, but spirit should be first. You have to lead with spirit in order to get all of it. Because when you walk into the room just offering the sexy body, thinking, oh, that's going to lead into... Trust me, I th men have their own version of this too. Men think, man, if we just have enough great sex, then the relationship can evolve. This is why cohabitation is such a popular thing. And men are the ones responsible for cohabitation. <laughs> men are the ones who are like... Well, you got to test drive the car before you can know. Men are also subject to this false coding that says if you lead with the body, the spirit will follow. But that's putting the wagon in front of the horse. Yeah. You have to flip it and yeah. invert it and put the horse in front of the wagon put, and lead with spirit in your social engagements, including your romantic endeavors, so that you can have the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. And... The reality is, is I have not been ready at this point until now. I have not been ready to change this drastically or have all these band-aids just like ripped off painfully. And God's like, oh girl, we're going to change a lot of this. We're, we're, we're just going to. This, this is what we're doing right now. And like you complain that your future husband hasn't arrived. You ain't ready. You have the audacity to think that you are where you are right now is, is going to be accepting of that, that, that partner is going to be ready for you as you are. Like, that's really cute. <laughs> like, that's adorable, Paige. You're so cute. <laughs> like, right? It's like... I'm laughing at how you're describing <laughs> your conversations with God. With God, yeah. They, they, they mimic my own. And <laughs> I, I so love it. It's just like... There's so, it's, they're so candid. There's no, I'm not hearing any these and thous in these prayers. It's because that's not what I need. I need him to be at my level and have humor. And it's really hurting my feelings. <laughs> it's like, I know this is necessary growth, but I'm like, ow, ow, ow pain. Uh, I've had moments like that. Yeah. To where I just... And it's not necessarily that I have to change and be modest to attract that future partner. It's not like I'm like, okay, well, like, if I just put on a really, like, cloistered dress, then, like, they're going to think I'm a holy woman. Well, if you want to get like, me, you need to wear a box. <laughs> I, for, 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 for my Make personal, for, Jesus. for my personal preferences, cardboard is my <laughs> Cardboard. <favorite. laughs> That's really <laughs> I just, uh. 
that, that's that's where this place is 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 just that that transmuting or translating period of fierce accountability and the reality is is that I have to try I can't just rely on what I've done before because obviously I'm the common denominator and what hasn't worked and what has past. not worked and what has hurt my feelings and what has perpetuated these consistent stories of I love how Byron Katie fallacy. says no one can hurt me that's my job <laughs> Like, that's extreme accountability. Yeah, and so it's and it's just, also extreme liberation. Exactly, and the reality is, is I've never known this place of middle regulation to be habitual. So that this going all the way here and then coming back in the middle is uncomfortable for me at first. It's unfamiliar. That place of rest and faith is like, oh, I've never done this before. Is this supposed to how it be? Yeah. It's like, is this how it's supposed to be? Is this what, is this real life? I don't, it's fine. I'm glad you're at where you're at. It's, and it's okay that you weren't at where you're at before now. It's an unfolding. It's like water coming up and out of the well. And the fullness is in that place where you drink from it's mm -hmm. we don't have to plan it and we couldn't predict it and everything in from our past is the way it was supposed to be yeah because it was that way agreed and and let's just look forward to what the future will bring but Christ is it's gonna be okay because of Christ and you know uh, people think the application of Christ's atonement is, is for the future, but the present moment can be perfect every time because of Christ. So that's just where I place my trust. I place it in Christ, but how that exhibits itself in my daily living is I put trust in the present moment. Because... I invite Christ into every moment, and his atoning sacrifice perfects. And so we have all that we need now, and we're whole now, and therefore we can walk into a room dressed modestly because we're whole. And we're not Correct. seeking, we don't need, but the approval was established on the cross. Yeah. For me, for you, and... You know, as a female, modesty is, is a pivotal expression of one's relationship with Christ. But as a male, um, it exhibits itself in different ways. But I think as a male, maybe it's as the ego is overcome, swallowed up in Christ, there's, there's less oppression. There's like the leadership changes. The leadership shifts from Correct. domineering to gentle and meek. Yeah. And that's how I feel it. That's that's how it expresses it through my male form, Christ's atonement. But through your female form, I think modesty is, is a key way that we can see it expressed. I don't know. Thoughts, maybe a part two, but Paige, thank you so much for sharing. You're welcome. You're beautiful. Thank you. And this was beautiful. It was because it? of because it was you. All of a choice to wear a dress. <laughs> Who knew? Seriously. <laughs> and baby blue is my favorite color too. Yeah. So I mean that was because of Brian's person, but you know, that's that's. Do you want to eat? Yes. All right. Let's get you some food. Okay. Thank you. Bye for now. See ya.